Hi, my name is Karen Holmes. I'm the founder and director of the World Peace Organization for the One World Government. Uh, today I wanted to talk about two events that have been going on in the, in, within the United States and bring them together with an understanding about what can be done about this. Uh, over the last week or so, uh, there has been, I think it was February 4th, the first um, event happened, uh, and that is the uh, NORAD uh, started tracking the balloon, the, um, the spy balloon that came from, supposedly came from China. And then over the next few days, several days, there were four additional, three additional balloons that were smaller and not necessarily uh, associated with a spy balloon. They, they, um, the intelligence is that they came from probably private individuals, like a possibly a company um, advertising something, maybe? Um, it's hard to say. Okay, the other thing is the train a derailment that occurred in uh, in New Palestine, Ohio, and leaving a, a toxic mess in the city. Okay, I wanted to talk about the International Department of the Environment and how how necessary it is to resolve issues of the environmental issues the the uh, environment is the the earth you could say is a closed ecosystem and what occurs in one part of the the world as we could tell by the balloon and how it came in the airflow uh, it's a closed ecosystem so what happens in one part affects the whole eventually it affects the whole part so instead of it being based on one country or an agreement with between let's say Canada and the United States um, it has to be considered part of an international uh, department um, that has the capacity to go in there and clean it up uh, solutions for how to deal deal with different crises can be handled all without without there being, um, let's say, um, a, trying to do a balancing act between the people who are, are being driven from their homes possibly for a while or not sure they're safe to go back into their homes or the, the company that is uh, like the um, Norfolk Southern Railroad that was involved with it, that de the train that derailed. So we, what we have is a situation, my cat is coming back, coming here. Um, you can go, go someplace else and find a place to go to sleep. Okay. Anyway, what the, the solution to that is to make it possible for, there, here you better get down cat. The solution is to make to instead of do this balancing act and having the pollution all over the world basically not be resolved because of the, because of this everybody pulling different directions and the government trying to respond and the political aspects of it and trying to figure out what to do basically if the international government if we all support the creation of the international government we have a way to solve all these problems. There isn't any question about, under the circumstances, there is no question about whether China is doing something nefarious with their balloon, spy balloons, or what to do about shooting them down or whatever. There's always this international relationship that exists where instead of it being a political issue, that can be, let's say, swept under the rug because it's in nobody's best interest. You're not going to get reelected if you have this environmental crisis that you didn't do right. Okay, basically, our government can say, okay, instead of us battling it over in Congress or be the political parties, we can just say we turn the responsibility over to the international government. They come in and they're responsible all over the world 
for cleaning up the environment. And all we have to do is to turn it over to them and all the experts in the fields can come and do it. They can, they can help. We have the International Department, of Tra International Department of Transportation that can deal with, with uh, st safety standards be, be for railroads or for airplanes or whatever. Uh, we, we have everything working together on a, on a global basis so these problems will be solved. If there's a problem between two countries, we can deal with it in between in the court system, we like between the way it is between the states. You know, we have a if there's a, a problem between the two states because New Palestine is right on the border there, um, and right and so um, into Pennsylvania. So what you have is a situation here where where there can be a problem between the two states. It can be settled in the court system, the international court systems associated with the international government. If it's between two two continents, it'll go into the 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 uh, superior courts between the between continents. So let's say that you have no president going from into one, another country telling them what to do or what not to do and trade agreements will be resolved in with the uh economic and the financial uh departments there's going to be 11 departments all and all uh they'll become they'll become stewards of the land instead of instead of interest groups uh that are um, trying to control certain aspects of it. Basically, all we have to do to solve all these problems is to all work together to create the international government and then, then allow all the experts to, in the fields, their fields of the 11 fields, to solve the problems, to come together on a global basis and to set up this international department. And then they'll go there, they'll be autonomous, they'll, they'll sol help solve the problems. And then as they do it, then they can work for a year, two years, go back home and solve the problems there too and work on all the different levels. I live in a little town on the Oregon coast and just there's if I go that way a couple miles, or if I I or that way, I hit the Pacific Ocean. I'm I'm just basically within the tsunami zone, of, and here, uh, I am in. Um, we I got a very strong message in two thousand. It was a two thousand eleven when. When in Japan, when the tsunami hit, when the earthquake and the tsunami hit, and the the um, Fukushima uh, radiation things like that, we had we had along the coast here. We were people were watching to see if anything was going to going to come up on our beaches from that had been floating in the water uh, from from Japan. And if I remember correctly. Uh, a, a Japanese boat f f floated up onto the, onto our, one of our shores along the coast here, and it wasn't they sent it back or something. I don't remember completely, um, but but so what happened in Japan uh, affected our town. We I was living at the time. I was living in a house that was right near the river, and. And the ocean, where the river and the ocean meet, and I could see, I had probably the best seat in town for for a for the tsunami. I I watched it. I found out about it the night before when I checked the news last thing, <clears throat> and and then in the morning we were all wondering. We got up early and we were wondering whether whether there would be a problem and. And I remember very distinctly uh, looking out the window towards the river. There was a the window looking towards the ocean and one towards the river. And when I looked out, the the river looked like it was running backwards. It 
you know, it's normally it was running the one way, and then the other way it it was running, it was running all the water was running up the river, and it was so weird. I I watched it cycle down and cycle up and cycle down and cycle up, and the, I had the I was um, uh, a caregiver for an elderly woman who had been in the Coast Guard uh, Reserve uh, Auxiliary. And, and what she had said is, she she explained to me, she showed, pointed out to me how how the water was running. She had lived in that house for, for probably 40, 50 years. So she knew the ocean pretty well. And she looked around and she showed me there was a, a like a line of, um, like a bump there where the water was coming down the river and then coming back up again. Anyway, so we watched, we were personally affected by what was happening. We saw the boats floating out. There was, there was like over a billion dollars worth of damage in, in our, just our small town that from what happened over there in Japan, actually it was that way. So there was a, we had a very interesting set of circumstances going on here we understand that what happens in one place eventually affects the whole thing. So the International Department of the in Environment is very important. We're a closed ecosystem, our planet is a closed ecosystem, and what happens in one place eventually happens the whole into the whole area. So it has to be under the auspices, under the control of an autonomous group um, that has that will function as advisors to the international government. The people, when you stop and think of it, the people who are in, in our governments are average people that just can go in there into the government and they're, they don't necessarily know everything about everything. They, they, they go from one situation to another and even in the departments and such, they all, don't always know how to handle issues. And then there's always the turnover and such. By working with the experts in the field to advise them on things, then they can understand what's going on and then they can deal with legislation that, that resolves issues. And then they can also work um, on the, with the departments of the international government. Uh, there will be, let's say, two presidents and they'll work back to back. So, so the, our, our national uh, government, the U.S. federal government, you could say, is it necessarily going to be handling anything related to the environment anymore? There'll be the, it'll be the, our international level government that, that is going to handle that aspect and then they'll keep us informed too. So what that does is it really throws a monkey wrench, you could say, into elections and the next election. So as we evolve into the ne next election, there's going to be two presidents, one a national and one international, and they'll stand back to back. They won't interfere with what the other one is doing. Let's say if it's Joe Biden who runs again. Let's say we put Joe Biden, now I'm just making it a possibility. This is not something I promote. But if you make Joe Biden, who's really, really focused on the the country, and you take oh, oh, put Obama in as the international president, um, what you have is a good combination between those two, because Obama did very, very well on the national level too. But you can see that because of his connection with all the other countries, he did very well. He was able to to talk to people on that level and communicate with them and and work with them instead of saying, We're the pres I'm the president of the United States, I'm gonna tell you what to do. No president will ever go back into another country and tell them what to do. Because it would be, if we're all like a, a country is like a family, 
No family really has the right to tell another family what to do. They, that's where abortion comes in and things like that. You don't have the right to... So we have our United States as a family, and we're, we're all working together, but each country will be like a family, and that's where my organization comes in because each of us is parallel, the independent members is parallel to a country. The events in our, our, in our family have been similar to what's happening on, in the, on the international level. So what we can do is by solving our problems in our own family, then we, using our government proposals, then we can go on and be ad advisors to the country that we're parallel to. So I am the first person, basically, to come into the organization. I, it was my plan. I got, we, it was given to me um, as part of a book that I channeled in, in 1999. The idea was introduced in 1999 in actually two books. And, and then, so what, what is my responsibility now is to deal with this first issue and that is like a global issue that is affecting everyone and it's the the exit strategy for Iraq I, you could say that ripples of effects have gone out to cause problems and now you're, they're talking about the end of our democracy so what we have to do is we have to address those ripples of effects that have gone out the plan for the international government is really really big and I, I did kind of a recap in my last video. Now it's going to go smaller, and we're going to start addressing just this one, this one government proposal. But as we set up work to set up the international government, we're going to be functioning on both levels. Thinking about how it would work is, is if you, if let's say, Vladimir Putin decides that he wants to become the leader of the world. He's going to, this is their time to shine, and he's going to go into other countries and tell them what to do. Uh, if that's the case, or Xi Jinping, or this is Asia's century to shine, is that something where you believe, on an individual basis, that, that those people can solve problems? Do you think that they can solve the, the international problems that we're dealing with? If they assume, if they do a hostile takeover of the whole world, is that in anyone's best interest? What would happen if everyone shared in the idea of world peace and it takes everyone working together to create the international government and everybody comes together and is part of the process, open to debate, the idea that everyone has a say in their government and that's one of our unalienable rights that we have from our creator to have a voice in our government. If, if voices are, are blocked, that's what leads to terrorism. When you don't have a voice in your government, that's what leads to terrorism, protests and terrorism. So that's what I'm going to tell you. What we're going to do now is to look at the idea of where disputes will be handled. We're going to look at all the things associated with it. It's the exit strategy for Iraq is still really, really big. It's still, it's still really big. But we can focus on that and then spin off the idea and of conflict resolution. And then we can do with rebuilding our country, rebuilding the things. If, if a new Palestine uh, is, is, has been this, the, a location where there's toxic waste and, and they're responsible for it, how are they going to rebuild that so that the people can go back in as if it has never happened before? That's what we're looking for is a solution where we can solve problems as if they had never happened before. We're going to stop this ripple effect that's gone off and create a sense of balance again. Okay, so the International Government Department of the Environment, um, we're a closed ecosystem, and now it's time to create an international government that, based on the principles of universal law, the application of that is the Constitution. Uh, only it's not that they become the other state countries become states. It's that we become the United States is one state 
amongst 200 or so, and depending on how many people join this. And then, then the application of that is we're going to start bringing everybody in to solve problems with projects. We have the principles, the power, and the projects. And that's where we're looking at now. So, so this is going to be be really actually kind of fun. You'll you'll enjoy the idea, and after a while, there's going to be so many projects going on, and so many everything that it's just going to. Um, that's what I'm working on now is how to how to keep everybody informed about the projects and the principles behind it. Okay, in fact, I'm just getting good ideas about that. Okay, so I'd like ask you to like, share, and subscribe. Of course, like any any program because because that allows us to bring in more people into the debate. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you for stopping by.